hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you're new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put the notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials so in today's class i'll be showing you how to make a butterfly rush kit the name of the fabric i used is called the damax but it is very light in texture and the amount of fabric i used is one and a half yards so some example of fabric you can use to make this rush kit can be a crepe fabric, a silk fabric, a damask fabric, or even a chiffon fabric. Just make sure that it isn't transparent. So this is a requested tutorial. If you would like to request for a tutorial, kindly send a picture to the Telegram group. And I'll drop the link of the Telegram group in the description box. So let's get started. Please take note that when making the front piece of this kit, you are going to chop the markings on the right side of the fabric. This is the essential measurement I'll be working with. I have the waist circumference, which is 28 inches, and the hip circumference, which is 36 inches, and the waistline to hip line, which is 10 inches, because it's an eye waist skirt, and the skirt length, which is actually 16 inches. I folded the fabric into two and to know the wideness of the fabric you need, you divide the hip circumference by four plus the length of the wings which is by the side of the skirt. And since I want the wings to be long, I'll be working with eight inches. This simply means that the hip circumference divided by four plus eight inches is actually the wideness of the fabric you need. So if your wings is going to be five inches long, it means that your hip circumference divided by four plus five inches is enough to achieve this skirt to know the length of the fabric you need for this skirt you have to work with the length of the skirt you measured on your clients so the length of the skirt i measured is 16 inches but because of the one inch waistband i need to subtract one inch from that 16 inches which will make it 15 inches now to know the length of the fabric you need you multiply 15 inches by two and that will be 30 inches so you might be wondering why i multiplied the length of the skirt by two the reason i multiplied 15 inches by two is because by the time you fix in the elastic into the elastic casing this elastic will help you reach the skirt to the exact skirt length now i also added one inch to in allowance to the m which made it 31 inches altogether the first step is to mark the starting line which will be the waistline of the skirt the next step is to place the measuring tape vertically on the waistline to subtract one inches for the waistband of the skirt. Now the waistline to the hip line is 10 inches because it's a high waist skirt. And the full length of the skirt is 31 inches as we calculated initially. Now on the waistline, I will place the waist circumference divided by 4. The waist circumference divided by 4 is 7 inches. At this point, I won't be adding any sewing allowance to that. And the reason why a sewing allowance isn't needed on the waistline is because if you include a sewing allowance, you won't get a proper fitting on your waistline. And for those of us that might be like, oh, okay, what if there is a mistake? What if the waist is too tight or the waist is too loose? How do I adjust it? So the best way to adjust the waistline of this skirt to your exact waist measurement will be done from the zipper allowance, which will be at the center back of the back piece of the skirt. The next step is to mark the hip circumference divided by 4 on the hip line. But in this case, where this fabric isn't stretchy, I would advise you to just add extra 1 inch to the side of the hip line. But if it's for a stretchy fabric, please, I would advise you not to add any sewing allowance to the side of the hip line measurement. Because the more fitted the skirt is on your body, the more it's all the ruffles at the sides of the skirt. The next step is to connect the waist point to the hip point as shown. To get the wideness of the M for this skirt, you place the tape on the hip line to mark the hip circumference. Then you place it back on the M line to mark. To connect the hip points to the M points as shown. The next step is to mark how long you want the wings of the butterfly to be at the sides of your skates. So in this case, I'll place my tape after the waist points measurement to mark 8 inches and i'll also place my tape after the hip point measurement to also mark 8 inches and on the end point i'll place my tape to also mark 8 inches 
but if you don't want the butterfly wings to be as long as mine you can reduce it to about five inches all through since i marked eight inches all through so some people might be like why are you making a curved shape for the butterfly wings why didn't you just make it like a square shape so it can be easily sewn well it can be sewn easily this way and the reason why i decided to make it this way is because I'm sure you don't want one side of your butterfly wings to be longer than the other side so it's always advisable to make accurate measurements during the marking process the next step is to cut out the front piece of the skirt so one interesting thing about this style is that the stitches will be directly on the right side of the fabric in order to make sure that the stitches are well accurate you need to flip the skirt to the other side as shown and to place exactly the same waist hip and m circumference i used on the other side now i'm going to mark the starting line and i'll also mark the hip line and the full length of the skirt on the waistline i'll place the waist circumference divided by four and on the hip line, I'll place the waist circumference divided by 4 plus 1 into an allowance since it isn't a stretchy fabric to connect the waist point to the hip points as shown. And for the wideness of the M, I place the tape on the hip circumference to also place the same mark on the M line to connect the hip points to the M points as shown. So I practically just did the same thing I did initially on the other side of the skirt. Obviously, you can see that the two sides of the fold has the same shape and the same measurements. Now, the next step is to notch the exact waist circumference. So, I notch this point in to about half inch. So, from this waist point to the center fold of this skirt is actually the waist circumference of the skirt. And this extra extension I draped is the butterfly wings. The next step is to place the front piece on the back piece to cut. The difference between the front piece and the back piece is 1.5 inches which is served as the zipper allowance in the center back of the back piece. Please take note that this is the wrong side of the back piece which I folded into two. And then I went ahead to place the front piece on the back piece making sure that I have about 1.5 inches zipper allowance on the center back of the skirt. Since the back piece of the skirt isn't a fitted skirt, you don't need to make a butt spacing at the center back of the skirt. So you just have to separate the zipper allowance as shown. The next step is to notch the exact waistline on the back piece by following the notch you did on the front piece. After which you trim out the side of the back piece. The next step is to use a chalk to mark the zipper allowance. On the center back so you don't get confused now i can take out the front piece since i've marked the zipper allowance on the back piece now on the back piece i want the zipper opening to stop on nine inches so from that nine inches i will make a stretch stitch down to the m and this will be the zipper opening Alright, so after I made this stitch, you should have your zipper opening as shown. The next step is to pin the zipper opening so it doesn't alter the measurements when you're about to secure the waistline of the front piece to the back piece. Or better still, you can use a loose stitch to secure the zipper opening then you lose it later after you've secured the sides of your skirt. So it's time to sew the pieces. This is the back piece, right? So how do you sew this? First of all, from this part you notched, you need to secure the upper parts of the skirt by folding it in half an inch and further folding it in by half an inch. So after folding it, you continue your sewing by raising the machine footer to sew the sides of the skirt by folding it half an inch and further folding it half an inch. So you get to the end of the skirt and you also raise the machine footer at this point to continue the sewing by folding the m of the skirt in by half an inch and further folding it in by half an inch and you also raise the footer at this point to secure the side of the skirt by folding it half an inch in and further folding it half an inch in so you get to the other top of the skirt then you secure the top part by folding it in 
and the folding will stop at this end of the notched part. Now for the front piece of the skirt, you open this up to secure the sides exactly the same way I did for the back piece of the skirt. And the stitches we end at this notched part all right so this is the back piece and i've secured the sides and for the front piece of the skirt i have also secured the sides The next step is to flip the front piece to the right side of the fabric. So the reason I flipped the skirt to the right side of the fabric is because I want to make an elastic casing in which the elastic will be passed into. So the width of the elastic I'm working with is half inch. So the way I place the elastic, I'm just going to mark a spacing that isn't too close to the elastic so that the elastic can pass through the casing freely. So the elastic spacing I got is almost one inch. So I'll just keep marking following the size of the spacing. So on this side, I'll also mark the exact elastic spacing. The next step is to place the front piece and the back piece on each other, making sure that the wrong side of the fabric is opposite each other. Now I'll use my pins to secure the front piece and the back piece together so it doesn't shift while making the stitches. Now I'll take the skirt to the sewing machine to secure the inner line from the waist down to the M and I'll also secure the outer line from the waist down to the M. Alright, so I have two stitches because I stitched on the two lines. The next step is to insert the elastic into the elastic casing. To know the length of the elastic you need, you need to work with the exact skirt length. The skirt length is 16 inches, so this simply means that I'll be cutting an elastic band of 16 inches long. And since we have two elastic casing, this simply means that I'll be duplicating the elastic band. And you'll be making use of two safety pins for each elastic band. Now I use the safety pin to hold the edge of the elastic, which I'm using to pass the elastic into the elastic casing. At this point, you shouldn't let the tip of the elastic go in completely. So I'm going to pin this elastic at the top so it doesn't go in completely. And then I'll take that to the sewing machine to stitch the top of the elastic. Now I'll also use the second safety pin to pass this elastic into the other elastic casing as shown. Now I'm going to pin the top of the elastic so it doesn't go in completely. Then I'll take this to the sewing machine to stitch on it. After stitching the top of each elastic, the next step is to take the measurements of the waistline with the zipper allowance included.
So the waistline with the zipper allowance included is 31 inches. So my waistband is 31 inches long and 3 inches wide. I also used the gum stay to glue the wrong side of the entire band. The reason why I didn't use the gum stay on half of the band is because the fabric is very light. So if I didn't use the gum stay on the entire band, it might be very difficult for me to secure the waistband on the waist of the skirt. Now I'm going to attach the waistband to the waist of the skirt. First of all, you need to place the waistband on the wrong side of the skirt, making sure that it's directly on the waistline to secure the waistband to the skirt waist as shown. And after I attach the waistband to the skirt, this is how it should be. Then you should fold the waistband into two to secure the edges of the waistband. Alright, so I've secured the waistband to the skirt. The next step is to attach the zipper to the zipper opening. So we are almost done with these skirts. The final step is to pass the elastic completely into the elastic casing so you get to the end of the skirt so it gives us this rush butterfly wings now i'm also going to pass the elastic so i get to the end of the skirt The final step is to secure the end of the elastic. So this is very easy to secure. You just have to remove the safety pin first. Then you fold the elastic in by half an inch. Then you try to insert it back into the elastic casing. Making sure that the elastic isn't showing anymore. Now you should make sure that the elastic part is well stitched. Now you should repeat the same sewing process for the other side of the elastic casing. Alright guys, thanks for watching to the very end. I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe and also put on your notification bell to be notified when I upload new tutorials.